Hi, I'm Jan Kamenisch from Divinity, and this presentation is about chain key technology. The internet computer is uh, driven by a set of uh, protocols that, that allow it to scale to a million of nodes and therefore provide like, scalable, uh, unstoppable computing powers to canisters. Chain key technology is at the heart of this uh, internet computer protocols and itself it's, it's a set of protocols and actually it is special uh, bleeding edge cryptography that we have developed. The most visible part of uh, chain key technology is that the internet computer has a single public key. And with that single public key, uh, users who interact with the internet computer, they can verify messages that come from the internet computer with respect to that single public key. So it's a huge advantage with other protocols. So for the internet computer, all you need to verify messages are a single 48-byte uh, public key. Whereas, for instance, for Ethereum, you need to download uh, at least uh, 400 gigabytes of uh, data in order to have the same effect. Now let's uh, explain chain key technology a bit further. So in order to scale the internet computer, actually not all the nodes can run the, the, the same canister, but we have to distribute the canisters over different uh, nodes or, or over different set of nodes. So we call this set of nodes uh, like a subnet of the internet computer. One of these subnets is special in, in that it hosts and governs all the rest of the subnets. And that single public key I was talking about is actually the public key of that subnet that governs all the rest. The uh, NNS subnet will generate the keys for all the other subnets. So it will generate a public key, it will generate a certificate on public key, together with key shares for the individual nodes of that uh, subnet. And like that, with chain key technology, the NNS can infuse uh, other subnets, can start other subnets from scratch. So now when users interact with, with a subnet that does computations uh, with their canister and re receive results from that computation, they can verify that by a signature on the subnet on these results with respect to the subnet's public key, and then that public key of the subnet can be validated using the certificate that the subnet had obtained uh, from the NNS. Uh, so there's like two parts of uh, chain key technology. The first part is what we have just talked about, where the NNS subnet can generate keys for other subnets. And the second part is how a subnet once received the keys uh, from the NNS can manage these keys. Nodes can crash and they need to replace. Nodes might become compromised and need to be wiped. In both cases, the secret key that uh, the subnets have received need to be reshared among the new sets of nodes and so to uh, maintain that key material that the subnet has received. To this end, we are using uh, threshold signatures. So threshold signatures really is a uh, itself like a set of algorithms that have to play together. So first of all, we have like an algorithm to generate keys. So here's a dealer that generates shares for the different participants, uh, along with like a public key of that set of participants. Now with these shares, uh, the participants can take a message and sign them with using their uh, individual shares. And uh, as soon as sufficiently many parties have uh, produced such partial signatures, these signatures can then be combined into an overall signature that can be verified with respect to the public key that uh, was generated uh, initially. So these are the, the, the three algorithms. So let's see how we use them in, in chain key technology. So what, what we want to do here for the NNS to generate those keys, we want to have a non-interactive version of this uh, key generation algorithm. The standard key generation algorithm of a threshold signature scheme requires an all-trusted dealer. And with the internet computer, that wouldn't quite work because we don't want to trust any single party. So to solve that, uh, we've uh, come up with some new efficient cryptography that allows uh, like two things here. First, uh, it allows a dealer to non-interactively generate those keys. The dealer generates the secret keys and the public keys uh, as uh, in the original algorithm, but now what is different is that the secret keys get encrypted for the individual parties, in our case the nodes. And then, and that's the, the clue here, is that uh, the dealer also generates non-interactive cryptographic proofs that the encrypted uh, secret key shares actually match to the public key that, that was generated as well. And with that non-interactive proof, actually any party can verify that the sharing was done correctly. The second part is uh, a mathematical property of, of this uh, sharing scheme, namely that two different sharings can be combined into a single sharing. So if you have like uh, two or, or more dealers, uh, the receiving parties can uh, 
doing a mathematical homomorphic operation, as we call it, on the public keys to merge the different public keys into a single public key. And they can also do the same thing on the secret keys, resulting in a, a new sharing, a combined sharing. And as we already know that all the sharings are correct because of the zero knowledge proofs, uh, this homomorphic combination will actually uh, make sure that as long as a single dealer did that correctly, so it did not leak the secret keys and it did uh, generate those secret keys correct, the overall combined secret keys will also be secure because they contain enough randomness and, and uh, will be secret as well. The nice property about this homomorphic uh, operation is that uh, it will ensure that as long as a single sharing was, was done uh, correctly, namely the keys were generated uh, randomly and did not uh, let leak anywhere, then the overall com combined uh, secret and public keys are, are secure as well. So this allows the NNS now to start a new subnet to generate the keys uh, for the subnet. More precisely, every node of the NNS will do such a sharing and send that sharing over to the nodes of the, that form the new subnets. The subnet nodes will then combine all these individual shares into their final share of the overall combined public key. And the NNS will also supply the subnet with a certificate on the subnet's public key. Now, we also were talking about the second part where actually the uh, subnet has to maintain uh, their public keys. And now we're talking about the second part where the subnet nodes have to maintain uh, the key materials that they have received initially from the NNS. And here we need a second uh, cryptographic tool well, also it's almost the same, but in, instead of generating a fresh key, we actually reshare the secret keys that the nodes have. So it, it's almost the same. What, what is different here is that uh, so the nodes reshare that secret key, and now, as the secret key, of course, cannot be leaked, they will also make an encryption of that secret key, and now, with the zero-knowledge proof, they will uh, prove that the encryption of their uh, old secret key is consistent with the sharing of that secret key and then provide uh, that to all the other nodes. Now all the other nodes can, can verify the correctness here and if, again if sufficiently many of the nodes did that correct then we're all good so we have a fresh resharing of that, uh, these uh, secret keys. Let's see how non-interactive resharing can be used for subnets to recover from failure for instance. So here in our example we have like four nodes and one of them uh, crashed, lost all its states, so lost all the secret key materials and since we're using a three out of four secret sharing scheme, the remaining nodes can still operate, but of course if like one more would fail, then that would be disastrous. So what, what, what happens is that the NNS would uh, assign a new node, so uh, stock it up to four nodes again. And now that fourth node, of course, also needs uh, like a secret key share. And to this end, the original nodes will reshare their secret key for the new set of nodes, the four nodes, with, with the uh, non-interactive resharing technology. And after that, each of the four new nodes will have a new sharing of the uh, secret key corresponding to the subnet's public key. And that's how we, we can recover from subnets where nodes have crashed and replace those nodes and keep them operating. Now, only the secret key is not good enough yet for the new node uh, to join the subnet because it also needs the state of the canisters uh, in order to execute all the transactions that the subnet should execute. So it needs to receive the state from all the other nodes as well. The key materials are not yet enough for a node to operate on a subnet. The nodes also need to have the state, the latest state of that subnet, so that they can actually execute the transactions. So to, the, to this end, the node that just joined the subnet needs to have that state from all the other nodes. As individual nodes cannot be trusted, the nodes together have to authenticate the latest state, and then now with that authenticated state, the new node will be sure that the state it received is actually the real state, the right state uh, to start off. Now authenticating the state and actually also resharing those keys are both expensive operations and we cannot do them every round. But rather we do them at uh, designated intervals and uh, in these intervals so we produce the authenticated state and a, a resharing of these secret keys. Both the, those two together we call a catch-up package because it's, it is what allows a node to catch up uh, to the other nodes uh, and operate uh, together with them. And these catch-up packages are actually very powerful because they not only allow us node replacements, as we just have discussed, uh, but they also allow a node to resume. So if the node has no crash, but maybe it was offline for some other reasons, uh, if that was for too long, then actually the node cannot just re-execute all the transactions, but it needs to catch up. 
And to this end, you could just download the latest catch-up package and then uh, unpack that and resume operations. It also allows us to resurrect the subnet. In the catastrophic case where like, more than uh, one third of the nodes would have crashed or uh, lost their state, as, as long as we still have a catch-up package, the NNS can take that catch-up package, just add a new sharing of, the, of these uh, secret keys because the sharing was, uh, is not available anymore, and then uh, sort of start a new subnet from that original catch-up package. Also, and probably even most important is that the catch-up package also allows us to upgrade the protocol. Because the catch-up package defines a well-defined state of a subnet, we can say that after a certain catch-up package, uh, all the new nodes will download the new protocol versions and run the new protocol versions from that catch-up package. Non-interactive uh, DKG and key resharing are just two ingredients of chain key technology. There's much more and we will have uh, talks about all of this uh, soon online. At the heart of uh, chain key technologies are consensus protocols that orchestrates all the different sub-protocols. Of course, the consensus, uh, the main task of it is to collect and agree messages from users and get them executed. But uh, it also has to orchestrate the non-interactive DKG and the resharing between all the different nodes. It ensures that computations are done correctly. And even if some bugs happened because of a hard disk failure or some cosmic glitches that, that flips some bits, that these bugs wouldn't spread to other subnets but uh, remain contained. It also orchestrates the resumption and the synchronization of state. It orchestrates all the upgrades, starting a new subnet from a given state. And another interesting feature is actually that the consensus protocols also provides the cure randomness to applications that is actually very, very hard to achieve in a correct way. So we'll have technical talks about all of these details uh, very soon and we'll also publish the specs about that. In summary, chain key technology enables the internet computer to have a single public key that the world uh, can use to authenticate uh, messages from the internet computer. Chain key technologies also allows the NNS to add new subnets and scale the network forever. It allows the NNS to revive a subnet if too many nodes have failed. It allows to exchange crashed or compromised nodes. And finally, and probably most importantly, it allows the Internet Computer Protocol to upgrade and therefore to fix bugs and add new features. Thank you.